Hello everyone, this is Jan Chromi and together we will continue the course Interdisciplinary Approaches to Language and its Use. In this presentation we will focus on how is the vocabulary stored in the mind. We will thus discuss various models of the so-called mental lexicon. We already said that there are various components of the knowledge of a word. To know a word, we must know its form, we must know its meaning, and we must also know its manner of use to be able to use the word in an utterance. However, we should ask, how is such information stored in the memory? In the real world, we may store it in a dictionary, which, we may, which may be alphabetically listed, for example. However, it is for sure that it works differently in the brain. Typically, the mental lexicon is conceived as a network of nodes. This means that words are represented as nodes and they are mutually interconnected based on various features. There are various approaches to mental lexicon and we will present few of them here. However, it is always necessary to think of mental lexicon as a theoretical construct. Various models may thus focus on different features of mental lexicon because they are grounded in a certain theory or a framework which emphasizes certain things and ignores others. It also means that some approaches do not accept mental lexicon as a sensible part of their theory. One of the first models of mental lexicon was part of the spreading activation theory, which was proposed by Ellen Collins and Elizabeth Loftus in the 1970s. The authors viewed the mental lexicon as a net of concepts, which are interconnected based on their semantics. The main idea was as follows. When a certain note is activated, which happens when we are retrieving the word from memory, it also partially activates the nodes which are connected with this node. In other words, if the word red is activated, it automatically activates also words like orange, fire, cherry, sunrise, rose, and so on. The idea of spreading activation can account, for example, for certain systematicity of word associations or for the process uh, we call semantic priming which we will talk about later. One of the problems of the model of mental lexicon proposed by Collins and Loftus was that it was solely interested in semantics. Another model I will introduce here tries to encompass the word knowledge in a more complex fashion. Willem Levelt, Erdi Roloffs and Antje Meyer presented a network model of lexical access which differentiates three levels conceptual stratum, which is fairly similar to what the spreading activation theory proposed, the lemma stratum, which contains the syntactic properties of the word, and the form stratum, which captures its morphological and phonological form. On this slide, we have a schema which represents our knowledge of the word to escort. As I already said, the conceptual stratum is similar to what the spreading activation theory would assume, so the concepts are connected to other concepts based on their semantic relations. For example, we can see that the concept escort is connected to concepts such as accompany and safeguard. On the lemma stratum, there are syntactic characteristics of the words, so we know it is a verb, and it, can, uh, it has certain grammatical features such as person, number, tense, or aspect. On the form stratum, the phonological and morphological form of the word is represented, so we can see that the word consists of certain phonemes and morphemes. The last model of mental lexicon I will briefly present here is a relatively new multiplex model devised by Massimo Stella and his colleagues. The authors think of the mental lexicon as a multiplex network, which means that there are multiple layers which encode multiple types of relations between words. On this slide, four layers are presented. Relations based on free associations, synonymical relations, taxonomic relations, and phonological similarities. On the right side, you can see how the network would look like. 
In one of the previous presentations, we mentioned Jeff Elman, who argue that words do not have meanings, at least meanings such as linguists would typically propose. In this paper, he argues that there is nothing such as mental lexicon where we should store words, their meanings and other related information. There are various arguments for his claims. One thing is that the meaning of a word is rooted in our knowledge of both the material and the social world, and that is ne never out of context. This is something the mental lexical models cannot really account for. Similarly, they cannot account for a very important process in language processing, which is prediction. If you are interested in more detail, I recommend you to read the paper directly. Before we will conclude this presentation, I have one reading tip for you. Until now, we discussed solely isolated words, but the linguistic theory during the last decades has stressed out the role of multi-word phrases, constructions, and so on. Therefore, I would recommend you this study by Inbal Arnon and Neil Snyder, who analyze the comprehender's sensitivity to multi-word units. If you enjoy the presentations, we would be glad if you would like them on YouTube. That is all from me now. See you next time.